Nice! Quick bird's eye view from the assembly line. There is our lonely host. The visitor pass. In 2020 I had an employee number 912 and I was uh, very sad that it was not 911 because Porsche 911. But yeah, 912 with a four-cylinder version is also not bad either. Uh, today we're going to be having a factory tour at Three Mets Automobili. And today is actually three months ago, but I was a bit busy setting up Vulcan Alpha and a bit lazy to edit the video. Just so you know, I'm still at the Nürburgring. Anyway, back to Rimac's factory tour. It's something I'm doing every year, so check out last year's video on the main channel, which was quite a higher production value video other than today. Jimmy was supposed to join me today, but he's still very, very sick, unfortunately, and he'll be flying back to UK. So I guess let's get inside, see what we can find at Three Minutes Automobili. Uh, some food chats. Hmm? But more importantly, what kind of neveras are being built and delivered. Maybe we'll get to see Mata Rimac's his own nevera that was completed a few weeks back, just before Christmas, perfect Christmas present. Um, maybe something else as well because i plan on maybe going to sweat another location because they have multiple locations and uh, who knows what we'll see there but more importantly who we will see there oh my god isn't that the head of sales are you gonna sell me a car yeah of course <laughs> hello how are you happy new year happy new year Christ. merry crisis no oh. pictures i'm sure we can make an exception ah yeah. for the batteries mandatory huh? mm. Mm. The black things into your shoe. Uh -huh. That's to keep you grounded. That's what Are you telling me I'm arrogant as a YouTuber? Yeah. <laughs> deserve that. You deserve to be grounded. <laughs> Interesting snacks. OCD people will appreciate. Yes. Double wishbones. All I wish for Christmas is a wishbone. Mmm. No. We'll get to the actual cars in a bit, but I think this is also interesting, the gearbox assembly line. The gearbox that's capable of going 412, proven. Proven? Yeah. And 275 in reverse? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Probably also 412 in reverse, but uh, Goran but, didn't but have his day. Yeah, and aero. We can maybe sort it out. Space. Yeah, aerospace, because the car is so fast. When you're assembling it, it tells you exactly what, what's the next part that you need to take. Mm -hmm. And you scan in, so you know exactly who's working on the line. And um, Which as you parts, follow the yeah. steps, yeah, as, as, as you follow the steps, it like lights up what you need to take yeah, next. Yeah, that's oh, cool. It's really cool. It's really amazing. And you can do this manually, but when, yeah. you, when you do it this way and when you use the hydraulic press, it eliminates um, room for mistakes. That's really nice. And here we have... The BFI, the big freaking inverter. That's on the rear one, right? The BFI. Yeah. Yay. Capable of lots of power and with room for future software updates to have even more power. At least that was the plan back in the days. So I don't know what the plan is now. But we'll be never be told until it's time. So here we have the front power train with roughly 600 horsepower. Every wheel has its own gearbox and also uh, its own motor, of course, which allows for very cool torque factoring features. The rear one is roughly 1300 horsepower and the same here, but it, the gearbox is sharing the same housing unlike the front powertrain where you have two different housings. But the principle and idea is still the same. And what I really love, always have loved, the philosophy behind Rimac is even though you will not see those components because they will be hidden away. They still look beautiful and that is that really pleases the eye and the philosophy behind the engineering principles. Nice! And that's going to be one happy gearbox. I remember when we were super proud of having one robot in VT. No, there are robots everywhere. Everywhere. AI is taking over. Ah. Body panels. ah, yes, before it goes into the uh, yeah. painting. Yeah, yeah. painting, rear bumper, trunk, uh, rear wing, uh, doors, uh, side radiators, front bumper. Uh, nice. Everything that that is from uh, carbon 
panel to be aligned here. So. Cool. So basically what happens, you first assemble the car completely, then you disassemble it, then you paint it, then you assemble it again. Yes. Yeah, so that's top-notch quality control. And I guess especially with naked carbon fiber, you need to align it perfectly so that the structure yes. fits. We need to make sure that every gap is perfect, every corner, every, everything needs to be perfect. Nice. What color is this one going to be? Black. Squadron black. Boring. Can you spec better colors? Shout out to our friend. Philip, who made these shots, you'll be happy to see them. Yeah. So every key box has a, a spec of the color of the vehicle and the letter uh, and your specific number. Um, and it's milled and produced in-house as well. Is that new? Or like... No, it's been delivered with every, every okay. car. Okay. You hmm. don't know everything that goes on in here. Oh. What's really important to us is that everything has its own jig and you can see more of that in the sub-assembly area. Mm -hmm. So nothing's being carried in hands, nothing's being worked on at the table. Um, so it's ergonomic actually to work on this height mm -hmm. for um, people assembling it. Uh, but it also minimizes um, room for mistakes. Mm -hmm. Everything is also protected. So when our upholstery department has um, a free minute, they make a lot of these um, covers for the car, for specific parts of the car, so that everything is protected uh, mm -hmm. until the very delivery. I really love how like the manufacturing process keeps being on improved because this is something I didn't see the last factory tour. Yeah. So it's even though maybe the car is in production, like, or maybe Matt didn't do a good job of showing us. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Here from the sub assembly, it feeds onto the zone uh, four. Yeah. The assembly line, um, and that's the first time, or that's the second time they're meeting. First time they met in the bonding area, and then on zone four they come together again. Everything's painted, everything's ready, interior and exterior assemble. Hmm. Yeah. But so prior to zone four, this is where we install the other features. Amazing. Yeah. So you can see now how it is actually coated in a layer of uh, well lacquer, protective. Uh, so unlike the unpainted carbon that we just saw. This is now nice and shiny. Okay, now we have landed to the actual more exciting part for some people who only like cars, the final production assembly line where you see actual cars come to life. So we're not allowed to show the actual spec sheet, but this is going to be the time attack car. What's the limitation number? It's like, what, seven? It's 12. 12, yeah. okay. 12. Is there any reason behind the number or just well, random? 412. Ah, yeah, good. Mm. 412, the top speed of the Nevera, which has been proven, yes. Yeah, lots of cars coming together, we can lots check out. Cars. They actually finally take the, the proper shape um, in zone 4 when everything comes together, the interior, exterior. Mm -hmm. But uh, these are just, you know, wiring, steering, big components, powertrain, suspension, uh, subframes, um, high and low voltage components, so that means all the electronic control units and the battery goes in here. Mm -hmm. um, the battery is actually in the tunnel of the car underneath your feet and behind the driver and the, the co-driver. Mm. It's a 120 kilowatt hours battery and um, yeah, 1.4 megawatt of power. Yay! It takes a lot of space. Oh, it's the first time I'm seeing the brake cooling for some reason. Oh. Never paid attention to it, but good to see it. Yeah, see? Yeah. We protect everything. Big protect for the because the carbon discs are expensive. Yeah. I love the weld on it. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's uh, jam packed, what you'd call it. And this is raspberry jam packed because of the color. I'm not sure what's going on with the finish of this car. I think it's gonna receive a livery. Okay. On top, so it's not done yet. Mm. It goes back to painting, um, maybe all together as the, the full car goes back, back to the paint booth. Yeah. And then a livery is applied on top. That's why it's not finished. Uh huh. Interesting. That's the final finish on Mate's car as well. Yeah. Nice. Some of my favorite spec. I saw, I think, the. The key box we saw earlier is related to this car, yeah, yeah. judging by the interior and, and exterior spec. Nice. Um, yeah, beautiful. I think it, you know, timeless It's like British colors. racing green. Very good. Very cool. 
Uh, I think this is ready for a 3D scan. Okay. Um, so what we do is, um, as part of the point control process, we 3D scan individual parts, but also once the car is lined, once the panels are lined and bonded and everything, we 3D scan the whole car as well. Our yeah. latest demo. Yeah, latest demo because I haven't seen it before. No. Nice. Very cool. Good spec. Like. Fancy. Very, very fancy. Yeah, very nice. Yellow stitching, highlights, Alcantara, the whole car. Very sporty. Um, so this is one of our liveries. It's the racing line liveries. Mm. And it's a so that's the, the red car that we saw there. That's, that's what it's right. going to get. The red car is getting the same. And here we have Mate's car. On winter tires, very responsible. I wonder how long those are going to survive with his driving. Not judging, only applauding. Similar to his Bugatti. Love the touch and the naked carbon fiber. Oh, sorry, painted naked carbon fiber. Even fancier. Tinted. Tinted. Yeah, that's, that's a better name. Thank you for the appropriate marketing term, Marta. So this is a souvenir shelf, right? I can take a door with me or something. Sure, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> rear, rear hoods, maybe a left or right door. Yeah. Take your pick. So what also else? here, take your pick. Yeah, what did Mate add to his uh, collection ever since? So these... Uh, uh, crash test and stuff? It's supposed to be our hyper garage, so the idea of... Uh, I mean, CSL is definitely hyper garage. In it's definitely hyper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it used to be, funny enough, it used to be a greenhouse uh, with a former facility, so definitely not green mm. anymore. <laughs> Um, but yeah, some of Mata's personal cars, uh, some of our early prototypes and uh, crash test cars. The e the of course. Itself. Yes. Still waiting. Still waiting for... Are you still going to do the plan? The pl plans change, <laughs> but it's going to be interesting. Good. But uh, <laughs> if next time you're on tour, it's still in the same state, someone needs a, a wake-up call. Okay, I can take it and take care of it. Like, well, we had well, lots we of plans to, back then. We need to start start working on that. Mmm, Evo 2. I've seen this car when it was picked up at the Nürburgring, actually. Yeah. It's good seeing it. Yeah, I have a picture with it. Ooh, that's Kate's car, right? Yeah. Well, it says so. I mean, it says on the license plate. Yep. Ooh, didn't see that one. Dutch plates, funny. And then also the Chiron of Mate. Ooh, our 32 Golf, and also from Dutch plates. Interesting. Yeah, SLR. But Mate, you can do better. Where is your 1.9 Golf for? You have to have one. That's the last crash car, right? No, not the last, but one of uh, the... I'm not sure which one was the last. Um, we donated a few to universities. We um, moved them around. Basically, they take up space. Hmm. The first Aero model. Aero Buck, yeah. One of the best parts about buying a Rimac is that you can save a lot of fuel, as you can see. You save $1,250 on fuel costs over five years. And aside, you have actually the Ionity deal, right? Right, right. So um, all of our uh, clients have uh, access to Ionity chargers. For free. For free. For and eight years. Yeah. I have eight years to buy a car. Yeah. I'm that kind of a cheapskate. I want to buy a car so I can enjoy free charging. <laughs> so it's eight years from the date of delivery. Ah, I have more years. Well, until they're sold out, which is going to be soon. We are right now in the paint shop and currently they're on a lunch break. Speaking of lunch break, we should get something uh, in a bit. So some parts here and there, but more importantly, Marta just told me that once Rimas will be moving to the campus, they'll be hiring 50 new paint technicians. So maybe you're one of them. And if you do not know how to paint, they will still be considering to hire you, pay you, and pay for your education. So if you want the opportunity of your lifetime and just like move to Croatia like I did in 2020, do it because great things are going to happen from it. And aside from Rimac, you probably know it's also Bugatti Rimac, you will be also working if you get the job, of course, or if you decide to apply, you can work on Bugattis as well. So actually very cool. Where can people apply? Like uh, our careers website. Yeah, careers website. Yay!
More robots. More robots. Uh, very excited about these robots though because this is the very first uh, large series, large volume series commission that we got a few years ago actually and uh, it's starting up real soon. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been set up about a year ago for the production of prototypes um, for a very, very, very cool project mm -hmm. uh, by another manufacturer so where we are uh, due to produce a battery. Mm -hmm. pack. Um, so now it's the you know final final run uh, before we hit uh, serious production. So actually this this line once fully assembled, it'll be chunking out um, 150 packs a day. Okay. And uh, in total, it'll be managed by 13 people. Nice. So essentially, almost fully automated, right? And this um, line will stay here, it will not go to campus? Or? That's right, it stays yeah. here, um, it would be way too... Um, it is just impossible to stop the project in the middle of a yeah. production run and move the whole thing because it takes a long time to set up mm -hmm. and test and uh, validate. So it's staying here alongside a few other departments, mm -hmm. uh, but most of it from Svetlana and from Young Kumer is moving to the campus. All right. Alongside everything else being set up anew at the campus. Cool. So, <laughs> Misha again, welcome to wiring. Wiring is department separated into three smaller sub-departments, yeah. three assembly where we are now, and body and component harness where we are going to be next. You can follow me. Yeah. So, over here we have the machine that can cut and strip both end of the wire mm -hmm. per hour input, and in the process of cutting and stripping, we are printing designated marks on every wire. So every wire has its own mark. Nice. According to that marking, operator knows where to position every wires because again, on the yellow boxes we have wire names. Mm -hmm. When all the wires are cut, we separate them onto our eight crimping stations again. Mm -hmm. Every crimping station is de dedicated for some majority of the pins and according to that we transfer everything. According to name on the box mm -hmm. and names on the pliers, we know exactly which pliers and which pins we need to use mm -hmm. to crimp specifically pin. And Tony now will uh, crimp one pin for demonstration so I can show you. So, mm. crimp pin. And now we have crimped the first pin in the series. Mm. And now we need to check if that pin is crimped okay, so we know that we can proceed to crimp every other pin with those plugs mm. or those, that tooling. Over here, we are measuring the crimp height, so height of the conductor and insulator. Mm -hmm. And on this test, this is the destructive test, we are measuring how much force pin can withstand when it's crimped on a wire. So we position the pin in the machine, strap it like so, and just press start, and the machine pulls the wire from the pin and measures the force in the process. So, according to force measured, we know, okay, that's when the pin snapped, but uh, mainly the force uh, is okay, and now we know we can proceed to crimp every other pin with those pliers and everything will be as it should be. Nice. And over here we have two machines that are fully automatic. Marco here is working on one of them and Marco can demonstrate and tell us in short how the machine operates. So this is a part of the preparation of the machine. So first we need to let the machine know which force is needed for every crimp. So we do three test crimps so it can verify that the crimps are pretty much in the same mm -hmm. uh, somewhere close to yeah. the force. So there is a factor in this PLC uh, that determines how much uh, how big of a difference in the force of the crimp 
is allowed mm -hmm. and that depends on the standards. So for automobile standards are 55. Yeah. In I don't know like airplanes or military. Mm -hmm. I think it's somewhere around 35. So now that we've made three uh, test crimps, mm -hmm. uh, I can you, you have seen how it works. So yeah. now you put the wire inside and it does it makes a pretty good crimp. Yeah. The crimping force is uh, somewhere close to uh, the force that we need. So this crimp is absolutely valid and it can go further into production. But if we have, for example, a wire that is missing some strands, and we will simulate that by cutting a few, the machine should be precise enough to recognize that the strands are missing and the crimping force will be different. And we have a production oh, fail. Wow. So when that happens, machine cuts the crimp, uh -huh. the wire is pretty much destroyed because it is too short for mm -hmm. um, the harness that yeah. we need. So the wire is cut again and then we crimp it again. And that's the way we make sure that the crimps are all valid and they're within the standard. Yeah, nice. Thank you, Marco. Yeah, thank you so You're much. Welcome. Never thought that like so much work goes into this, like simple wire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's. it's uh, bad, like, yeah, wires are dangerous, especially in, a, yeah. in an electric car. So no, for sure. Has to be Very uh, safety motor, compliant yeah. and everything. Just but how much time goes into one simple wire and everything that you've seen so far? So next time you ask yourself, why is the car so expensive? Because <laughs> it takes quite a lot of man hours to put everything together. Because uh, I mean, one wire al alone, just the wire, might cost thousand euros or so if not more if you would uh, add up things so very cool thank you very much guys for the you. background you can follow me to our next station mm -hmm. and the wiring process is actually something that's um cannot be automated so oh. perhaps yeah. perhaps in the future but currently no one in the automotive industry has it automated okay and is there like any specific reason, like uh, complications or what's the, or because the quality control? I think, of, yeah, of the quality control and all the aspects and all the tiny mm. bits and pieces that machine unfortunately for now can't do. Mm. So our next station is splicing. Okay. Over here we don't uh, connect wires by soldering or mechanically splice them, we ultrasonically weld them. Okay. So this machine is ultrasonic welder. It vibrates at very high frequency that they melt the particles of copper together mm -hmm. to form a unique bond called a nugget. And that's it. And that's yeah. it. Nice. Huh. So after that, we need to seal, let's say it like that, the nugget. Uh, Ultrasonic welder is connected with our infrared heating and uh, the machine knows according to the diameter of the nugget for how long and on how much temperature it needs to heat the heat shrink so it is consistently spread and it uh, has glue inside to don't let moisture come inside to oxidate the mm. nugget. So after that we have cut wires, we have crimped pins we have spliced wires. Mm -hmm. We are coming to our next and the last station for pre-assembly. Over here, it's connector marking and printing. So every connector in our car is marked accordingly. Everything has its own name and mark. And how do we do that? So a printer you saw on a cutting machine is exactly the same as this printer. This is the inkjet printer that shows mm -hmm. the strain of ink thinner than a human hair. Wow. When this screw passes the sensor, machine knows when to shoot the ink to make a uh, mark. All the green boxes you see behind me are our shop stock for 10 cars in advance. So in every box we have minimal of five of the same connectors. Mm -hmm. When the count comes below five, there is MO being dispatched, so Gaspar knows, okay, I need to print new connectors and fill the boxes. Wow. That's how we manage all the connectors and all the pieces needed to build 
all the harnesses for our car. Easy, fast, and as wow. it should be. <laughs> so, in case you missed it, for the audience, for people that are watching, what happened? A number got printed on it. Like the first time, I didn't even notice it, and they're like, "Aha! That's what's happening here." Also, over here we have hot stamping and cutting machine. So this machine cuts our hitch rings mm -hmm. on a specific length, and it, in the process, it hot stamps the mark on every hitch ring mm. so we know which hitch ring is which. And now that's almost it for the yeah. pre-assembly part. We have one last stop and our last stop is where the guys from pre-assembly put everything. So the, those boxes are our kit boxes and in every kit box there is material you need to have to build a harness. Mm. With that we now come to the best part, and that part is component and body harness assembly. Over here, you can see one of the biggest harnesses in our car. So this is a body harness, and uh, this is one of the biggest harnesses, uh, as I said, in the car. So when harness is taped, Everything is connected accordingly. We put the T markings. So every T mark is for the operators on the line mm -hmm. to know in millimeter where to position said branch of the harness. You see all the boxes, yellow boxes, had wires that are now built into the harness. According to wire name, we know which wire goes where and of course, uh, co connect accordingly. Mm. When everything is connected, there comes taping. Taping is done by input of our engineers. When everything is completed, it comes testing. And mm. how did we eliminate the human error? And how do we know that every harness is 100% bulletproof as, as, and as it should be? That we'll cover in a minute. Mm -hmm. so, so, few fun facts. Nevera consists of 25 kilometers of wire per okay. car, okay. around 10,000 connections, yeah. around 1,600 different pins and connectors. Yeah. All the wirings combined are around 55 kilograms. Okay. And so this is body harness for us. Why the body harness? Because the body harnesses are built onto the chassis of our car. Mm -hmm. We have 96 body harnesses per car and around 110 component harnesses that are built on all the stations. So combined we have almost 220 harnesses per car. Wow, crazy. Yeah, you Two can follow me. 25 kilometers is almost, well, the Nova Kring, Nordschleife and the Grand Prix combined. So yeah, I definitely. Like it. So over here you can see some of the smaller harnesses being made on the tables. We don't need to make them on the mm -hmm. Yeah. And as I said, the testing. How do we know if everything is connected accordingly and everything is as it should be? This testing table has every other side of every connector on our car. Okay. So operator brings the harness to uh, testing table operator. He scans the serial number on the harness. According to that serial number, table knows, okay, you brought me rear main harness. According to that, the light near the every connector it needs to be plugged comes up, so the operator knows which connector to plug where. Mm. Okay, all the so connectors are out. extendable. Okay. When everything is connected, you just press start. Uh, the program runs not by not only pin to pin, it runs every point in the uh, wiring, so we know, okay, everything is good, we don't have any errors, malfunctions, or anything like it. If everything is okay, there is label being automatically printed on our printer, that label goes to the harness, okay, mm -hmm. now we know this harness was tested, by whom, when, where, etc. 
and the copy of that label is mm -hmm. stored on our server. So in all the times we know, okay, the sadness was test. So in uh, short, that's pretty much it. That's amazing. And the uh, last part is harness uh, packaging. So this bag is made in house by our upholstery. And when the operator on the line, if we were to say that harness is in the bag, mm. operator on the line opens the bag and first layer of the harness he sees is the first layer that goes into the car. Okay. And as he unwraps the bag, he unveils the new parts of mm. the wiring that needs to be plugged in the car. That's one reason and the other reason is to protect the harness in a transport because harness from wiring goes to the warehouse and from the warehouse mm. to the assembly line yeah. where you'll see everything else. So that's guys pretty much it in short. <laughs> Very cool. Do you have any questions? Please? I'll probably have a gazillion questions <laughs> but people should better ask them in the comments. I really loved it like from the the small wires and actually this yeah. I haven't seen this before I mean it obviously makes sense uh, but like I said every time I come here I still learn new things <laughs> and that's amazing yeah, yeah we are definitely in one of the complicated uh, departments oh for sure in the firm for sure yeah. well, as many times as you hear the whole process you're never gonna know it <laughs> no 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 so we are the only car manufacturing company in the in the world that makes its own harnesses in house in house yeah so, we do have the one of the most complicated harnesses as well in the Netherlands. Definitely, yeah. definitely. It's one of the reasons. Yeah. If not the most complicated yeah. one. So, for example, in the early stages, there will be some kind of changes. Okay, mm. we need this connector to be prolonged for five, five centimeters. Mm. Okay, how do we do that? On the forward board preparation area, mm -hmm. left of you, mm -hmm. we prepare our form boards. If, well, for example, this connector needs to be prolonged for 10 centimeters. We will strip the drawing, plot the new one, put uh, the drawing on the form board, make everything accordingly, and we can implement the change tomorrow. And for instance, with the supplier, we would have to wait for, I don't know, six months. Yeah, yeah. And we, that, we need a change tomorrow. Yeah. So that's again one of the reasons Makes why we sense. do that. Makes like sense do to do everything in house. Yeah, 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 definitely. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time, Ivan. Thank you. Yeah, th th thank you. It's amazing. And see you next year when you can show <laughs> me more harnesses. Ah, uh, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> <be> interesting. Yes. <laughs> and we can only assume that probably some other cars, brands will be made there as well. Maybe, probably. Cannot talk. Lunch? Lunch. <laughs> lunch. <laughs> well, speaking of lunch we caught the upholstery department completely empty because they are now having lunch so I can just show you what it looks like what is happening all the steering wheels cool stuff oh this looks like a time attack wheel beautiful again everything handmade and most importantly in-house quick bird's eye view from the assembly line Again, a lot more empty than when we were downstairs because everyone's out for lunch. Quick overview of the offices and for more detailed view, you should check out last year's video. But more importantly, this is the last time I will be here and one of the last times you're seeing it probably because soon, actually already as of now pretty much, the company starts moving to the brand new campus. And speaking of which, I think we should go and have a look how it looks like over there. But first, maybe a quick stop at Sveta Nedelia the my old office location so the promised food shot very healthy I'll take one for me one for Maggie mixed waste bio waste paper and cardboard plastic and metal bye Marta hi Nevera hello hello oh, hello hello what are you doing here? I just had a factory tour. Have a good day. Nice to see well, you again. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Likewise. And see you at the ring. Bye-bye. <laughs> that was cool, seeing Miro, their factory test and development driver. Very good company car that he has. Very good. And there is my pickup. Hello. Hello. Pancake. So we're now going to Kerestinets to check out the campus. Exciting! It's been in construction for the last 
two years, I would say, I think 2021, and I have never seen it in person. And now it's pretty much completed if they're they already gonna start moving to it. You may proceed. And that's the building I used to work at. There is our lonely host. <laughs> How are you? Hey man, long time to see. Happy New Year, man. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. Hey. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> oh. No, two, huh? No. Bye, That was kind of it. The last car that you saw was actually the very first Nevera, aka production spec prototype. No, pre-production series prototype that I drove back in 2020, in March 2020. So almost four years ago. Wow, time flies. Mata showed us around. Cannot tell you what he showed us, but it was freaking awesome. It was amazing. Thank you, Mata, for your time. And now we'll be going to the campus. And that will be a video of its own because already now we have so much things that we have showed you and that was already quite a long video. But most of all, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much, everyone from Rimac Automobili, Marta, Matt, uh, Ivan, uh, everyone who took their time to show us around and show you the cool things. And for all the more cool things, subscribe, like and share and stay tuned and uh, see you then. Bye! And most importantly, also, uh, we will be doing all kinds of Croatia tour, all kinds of Croatia tours and tours all over Europe. So maybe you can join us for the next Rimac tour in real life, including Pancake. <laughs>